We're still talking about the tibia and fibula here in part uh, four. Uh, the distal aspect also has some um, some processes of note. Uh, what you have on the fibula in that the fibular portion, the distal aspect is the malleolus. Uh, and if you um, if you're there and you can uh, palpate your own ankle, you can feel this malleolus. It's the portion that's that you're actually feeling with regard to the lateral aspect of your ankle. And then if you uh, feel the medial aspect um, of your not not your ankle proper, but just uh, uh, just superior to the ankle on both of these, you have the medial malleolus, which is uh, the process off the tibia also. Um, and both of these uh, serve to actually um, stabilize the joint between the uh, between the tibia and the ankle um, onto the tibia and the tarsus bones, the tarsal bones, which we will talk about in the next um, uh, in the next slide. But they're considered uh, a projections at the ankle area. Uh, and with regard to um, with regard to the, here's the fibula and more of the interosseous membrane uh, and this is actually a posterior view here here's your um, here's your foot uh, your foot and ankle uh, the ankle is also called the tarsus made up of seven tarsal bones if that's not confusing enough with those endings uh, if it isn't confusing enough with those endings, then you have one of those tarsal bones called the talus. Um, I have to tell you this word tarsus, this uh, ankle also known as the tarsus, um, not used that much. Your book uses it. But most people just call the ankle and then the seven tarsal bones of the ankle. Uh, one of those seven is the talus. Uh, and the talus is the bone that the uh, the tibia is going to uh, articulate with. So talus, which carries weight from the um, um, from the tibia across the uh, trochlea. But actually, when you think of it um, the other way, it, it, the weight is, uh, the weight of your gait, of your footfall, is going to be transferred from the foot up to the tibia. Um, the calcaneus is a heel bone. And that uh, will transfer weight from, and, and if you think of your gait, next time you're walking, kind of pay attention to your gait, uh, your heel strike will be first on the calcaneus, and then uh, weight will be transferred from that up to the uh, talus. Um, and um, depending, I guess, if you're hitting with your foot, yeah, you, yeah, if your heel strike uh, is that way. Maybe my heel strike's different. Um, I, I'm just reading what it says here, and I, I, I guess I, I have to visualize it in my head with regard to this. It says the calcaneus heel bone, which transfers weight from the talus to the ground and attaches um, calcaneal uh, tendon to the cuboid, which is true. Um, the calcaneus does attach the calcaneal, which generally we call the Achilles tendon, uh, to the cuboid. But... Um, I guess it depends on whether you are thinking uh, from the body down or from the ground up. I guess I guess that's that's the um, the problem I'm having in my head in terms of visualizing this. All of that is true. Don't get me wrong. It just depends on how you're looking at it. Um, other than those two, and remember those are two of seven. Then you have the navicular, the cuboid, and then the cuno, uh, cuneiform bones, lateral, intermediate, and medial. Uh, and that's based on their position um, of the cuneiform bones. Beyond the cuneiform, you have the metatarsals. So beyond the tarsals, the metatarsals, uh, they're going to, they, the metatarsals and the cuneiform bones are going to make up what's known as the arch of the foot. And the arch of the foot really is what, where you get this distribution of weight. Um, and then beyond the metatarsals, beyond them beyond, I guess you might say, um, the, the bones that make up the toes are the phalanges again, just like the fingers. Uh, with the uh, great toe, the hallux, you have proximal and distal. Uh, with the uh, other toes, you have proximal, middle, and distal. And uh, from the great toe or the hallux 
to the little toe, they are again Roman numeral numbered. So they're numbered uh, one to five and verbally that's what you say one to five, but you're always going to use Roman numerals for that, uh, for the um, for the bones of the um, metatarsal bones. And then we have uh, um, another view of the metatarsals and the phalanges. And then, I mean, you have joints, the joints between the, the phalanges are the distal phalangeal joint, medial phalangeal joint, and proximal phalangeal joint. And uh, particularly on the great toe or the big toe, and sorry, I, I, it's the way I learned it, great toe, big toe, uh, or the hallux, is you can have diminishing um, diminishing space, and so and you can have a diminishing um, flexibility of the great toe, and with that, a uh, person will start ha having balancing pro balance problems. And uh, generally, your gait is is pretty much determined uh, when you start walking. But um, I mean, you learn you learn your gait when you start walking, and then it becomes um, very much a part of you and many times your gait is not your friend you're actually doing things um, when you when your foot when your foot makes contact with the ground that are not optimal for the rest of the skeletal system so in a perfect world the foot hits the ground and the weight is distributed and sent where it can be it can be supported in the best way and unfortunately many of us end up with back problems with feet problems uh, hip problems knee problems and some of this can be due to injury uh, but some of it can be due to the fact that our gait is not optimal for uh, the human skeleton and its development or maybe I'll say that backward is the way the human skeleton was developed uh, our gait is not um, supporting that development. And then you have a lateral aspect of the foot. Here you can see that calcaneus, that heel bone. Um, uh, you have a picture, I believe, in your book of that Achilles tendon. That Achilles tendon is a, is a pretty big, strong one also. It can also be torn, um, particularly if you have a fall or an accident, etc. cetera. Uh, and then you have your talus. Now, the talus is where the, the tibia is going to sit, the navicular, the uh, cuneiform. Remember, the cuneiform is going to be three different bones, metatarsals and phalanges. Now, what you're seeing is the longitudinal arch and the transverse arch. And arches transfer the weight from one part of the foot to the other. Um, the uh, longitudinal arch is the calcaneal, lateral, and... Um, Taller and medial portion, so basically it's it's a portion. Of, it includes those bones. That's where you're having that, and then transverse, um, which is the difference in curvature between medial and lateral aspect of the bone of the foot. And um, if you ever have feet problem and problems, or actually if you ever have to, I mean. Uh, unfortunately, if you get to uh, get the rare privilege of being older. Um, you may have to have orthotics in your shoes and a lot of times the orthotics will correct for a dropped arch because what happens is these arches are made by ligaments the ligaments that hold these bones together and ligaments although they're very strong they're not strong forever and uh, they do tend to flatten the foot out um, and um, what will happen then is in order to to correct that flattened foot due to age, uh, you have to have orthotics that actually uh, support this arch or, or create this arch, or at least help um, the ligaments uh, hold the hold the um, hold the arch up, because an arch or a curved portion of the foot is going to be stronger than a flat one, uh, and it also is a matter of this this design of the foot is again the optimal way to trans transfer weight from one part of the body to the other, we are trying to transfer the force of the foot hitting the ground uh, to the vertebral column because that's where that's the portion of the body that is designed to absorb that weight, that axial uh, skeletal system, as long as the discs are in, uh, intact. 
And so with these arches, unfortunately, many things can happen to the arches. Plus, you can actually, uh, you have you, you have abnormalities um, in, in, in relationship to the arches, like you can have flat feet, etc. So anyway, uh, that's what I have for chapter eight. Uh, it is a matter of you looking at the images. Um, the practice pages are great or any kind of practice pages that you want to find and uh, utilize for portions of the uh, axial and the appendicular skeletal system. Uh, and then uh, certainly you have a tremendous amount of information that is recommended by some teachers and highly recommended by others in lab uh, to learn, otherwise known as the bone lists. Um, I will see you for chapter, t chapter nine. Bye now.